More and more people travelled on the Fat Controllers Railway. Everyone had to work very hard indeed. The trucks complained bitterly. But then trucks always do, and no one takes much notice. Dirty trucks, dirty sidings, ugh, put in James. Silence, ordered a well-known voice. Let me tell you that an engine for goods work will arrive from Scotland tomorrow. The fat controller stared. Did you say two engines, Inspector? Yes, sir. Then send the other back at once. Quite so, sir. But there is a difficulty. What do you mean? The two engines are exactly alike, sir, and have no numbers. They say they lost them on the way. The fat controller seized his hat. We'll soon settle that nonsense, he said grimly. The two engines greeted him cheerfully. I hear you've lost your numbers, he said. How did that happen? The mourner slowly slipped it off, sir. You can who it is. What are your names? Donald and Dougie, sir. Good, he said. Then your controller can tell me which of you is which. Oh, he, he didn't ken our names, sir. We only given ourselves names when we lost our numbers. One of you, said the fat controller, is playing truant. I shall find him out and send him home. Inspector, he ordered, give these engines numbers and set them to work. Soon workmen came to give the twins their numbers. Donald was nine and Douglas ten. No nine and ten, smiled the inspector. Here's Duck. He'll show you round before you start work. The twins enjoyed themselves and were soon friends with Duck. We like it fine here, said Donald. That's good, smiled Duck. But take my tip. Watch out for Gordon, Henry and James. They're sure to try some nonsense. Get a fuss yourself, chuckled Douglas. We'll soon settle them. Donald and Douglas had deep-toned whistles. They sound like buses, said Gordon. Or ships, sniggered Henry. Tugboat Annie, laughed Gordon. Ha, ha, ha. Donald and Douglas cruised quietly up. You wouldn't be making fun of us, would you now? Gordon and Henry jumped. Uh, no, said Gordon. No, 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 certainly not. That's fine, said Douglas. And keep it that way. That was the way Gordon and Henry kept it. Every day, punctually at 3.30, Gordon steams in with the express. There is also a special coach for passengers travelling to places on Thomas's branch line. Thomas is very proud of his special coach. One afternoon, Douglas helped Duck in the yard, while Donald waited to take a good strain to the other end of the line. As Duck was busy arranging Donald's trucks, Douglas offered to take away Gordon's coaches. Douglas was enjoying himself, when an awful thought struck him. I hope the fat controller doesn't find out I shouldn't have been here. I couldn't abide going back. He worried so much over this that he forgot about Thomas's special coach. He pushed it with the others into the carriage siding, then ambled along to join Donald at the water column. Soon Thomas came fussing. Where's my coach? Coach? asked Donald. What coach? My special coach that Gordon brings for me. It's gone. I must find it. He bustled away. Lost sick, said Douglas. A mourner stowed the special coach with the others. A mob of angry passengers erupted from the siding. Now listen, said Douglas's driver. We'll change tenders. Quick now, do as I say. The fat controller and three passengers walked towards them. Ah, number nine. And why have you not taken the goods? May a tender is a wire, sir. The driver showed him the tender, still uncoupled. Here, gentlemen, are the facts. We investigate. Please accept my apologies. Good afternoon, gentlemen. The fat controller watched them till they climbed the station ramp. He swung round suddenly. Douglas, he rapped. Why are you masquerading with Donald's tender? 